Hello, welcome to this short tutorial video on getting started with ODB++ file import and performing SI Pro simulation in ADS. To get started, we will create a new workspace uh, using the regular wizard which is there in ADS and you just follow um, profile, uh, provide the workspace name and um, uh, create that in a particular directory uh, wherever you wish to create so that all your work is uh, seriously organized uh, just keep following the wizard by pressing next next uh, key and set as the preference as you want uh, click finish and now once we have the workspace we can go to file import select the design option and in the pop-up window uh, select the file type as you have so in this case it will be odb plus plus file format uh, browse to the location uh, wherever you might have kept the odb plus plus file uh, usually odb plus plus file will be a zipped format uh, typically dot uh, t g z <coughs> or it could be other formats so select the file click ok and then you can go to options um, select uh, some necessary options that may be required uh, for example you want to generate a layer stack create components in a particular folder uh, select the layers which you wish to import and you can leave out some of the unnecessary layer as you can see here we left out few layers at the bottom um, you can select the desired nets which you want to import so in this case we will import the entire nets and all the components so click OK once done and depending on your PC uh, power, speed, and also the file type, it will take uh, some amount of time. However, uh, before that, ODB++ uh, import option give you opportunity to assign appropriate material. And these material come from the database which uh, ODB file may have. And also you can correct uh, some of these dimensions uh, which may be a little irregular depending upon which units were used in ODB file um, you know while creating the layout <clears throat> so we can do a little bit of uh, fine-tuning and make sure the numbers look uh, appropriate as may be required right these modifications can also be done uh, once the stack up is available inside ADS now you can assign the dielectric properties the loss tangent and so on uh, however, we don't need to invest too much of time once the design is imported. We will have the stack up in ADS to perform all these operations. Now again, depending on the size of the file and, and the PC configuration, it takes a couple of seconds to import. And now we can see successful import complete message here. Just click OK and observe the workspace in ADS. So where we have our main design. Uh, which has a layout and a folder which contains all the components which are used in the design so basically they are footprint of those components by double clicking on the layout it shows us the, the imported odb file and we can delete some of these uh, associated text uh, which is not required for our simulation purposes however we could have um, you know avoided some of these by not importing uh, the text layer in case they are written in a different layer Using the navigator window, we can uh, you know, quickly find out uh, the nets and if this window is not available, we can go to view menu, click on navigator and we can switch on. So by selecting the nets, uh, those nets get highlighted, um, giving us indication on where they are with respect to our geometry. Now, once we inspect the geometry, we are ready to launch SINPI Pro um, analysis uh, window and then it will create a new setup as we are doing it for the first time you can give your setup a name as you want just click ok now again um, depending on how complex is the layout file it takes a couple of seconds to load the design into the si pro and pi pro analyzer window uh, so here is the si pro and pi pro window and then shortly you will see our design loaded up here so that's the layout which we are going to analyze. We can uh, inspect the layout in 3D, stretch it in Z direction for a better viewability. And now here is our complete layout, uh, which has all the nets um, in the design. And we can just click on filter and filter out the interested net, which we want to simulate. So here we can see I selected one net, uh, DQ. You select multiple nets and those are highlighted. 
um, <clears throat> so that we we are sure what are we trying to simulate. So once we inspect everything looks okay, uh, we can um, you know add these nets into the analysis engine, uh, depending upon what type of analysis we may want to perform. And that can be very simply done by uh, simply right clicking and adding it to the PASI analysis. Uh, just right click and select add to analysis option and then from the pop-up window select PASI. PASI means power aware SI in case you you have included the power plane and so on. Now the nets are here we just can just select the nets uh, right click and connect the ports onto that net by selecting this option and in here SI Pro is intelligent enough to give you the instance name where your net is connected and you can choose uh, whether you want to connect a component or connect a port. So here in this case we do have RN5 which is a resistor and we will uh, select the option of connect a port. And using the ground uh, pin it automatically places the negative pins uh, for each positive pin. As we can see here if we select the ports it shows the location of the port um, and plus and minus pins uh, for those ports and so on. So here we can see we have um, two um, you know, ICs U1 and U10 uh, which are connected to those nets. So the ports on the far end is also placed on both the sides. right? Now if it is required to be simulated for both the ICs uh, we can keep the port settings as it is. But in this case we would not like to have uh, the bottom port we only want to keep the U1 port. So we will go ahead and delete the ports which are associated with U10. And as you can see SI Pro makes it very very simple to do all these complex operations with other, other EM tools uh, make your life miserable. So you can just select delete and now we have eight ports in our design and uh, for this resistor uh, which is uh, connected in series to to the nets we are trying to simulate we can assign a component model right here. Um, so you could double click on this resistor it's like an array pack resistor and it opens up a window uh, where we can see uh, that there are eight terminals for the four resistors and we can find the associated um, you know pins for each of the resistors so it's one eight two seven three six and four five we can define it as an array component and now in this array component I can define eight to be minus one which indicates the second terminal of uh, first resistor and so on so two goes to minus two three goes to minus three and four goes to minus four now for all of this array resistor um, we can see the combination and attach a common model and this model could be a lumped model as parameter file or model database. In this case we will just simply use a lumped model and define the value of the resistor which we want to have. So for example if we say 10 ohm uh, you can see the symbol and 10 ohm will be associated. For this case we will just apply a 0 ohm resistor in series for all the four um, nets we are simulating. right? Now the entire setup is done as you can see there is no warning no error um, and now we can set options in terms of from where to where we want to simulate. So for this case a study will go from DC to 5 gigahertz using automatic sweep type that's recommended and under options you can also select ideal power and ground approximation. Uh, you can uncheck this if you really want to simulate the actual ground um, in the in the in the you know structure which you have. Now we can just simply double click on run and the simulation starts running. Uh, with this log window we will pause the video and come back once the simulation is finished. Now as you can see the simulation is finished. It took approximately 5 minutes 38 seconds on my laptop and it took around 1.8 GB of RAM which is pretty reasonable considering the, the complexity of the nets. So now we can go to results and observe our results for S parameter just double clicking on it opens up S parameter viewer. We have eight ports we can select the desired port right click and we can simply add transmission return loss near end crosstalk far end crosstalk. So again it's a very very simple way of plotting uh, data. So we select a transmission and switch off the legend as you can see from DC to 5 gigahertz. We can pick markers and we can click 
wherever we want to have um, marker locations on our trace to read the values. Also, we can edit the graph properties by clicking on this edit icon. Uh, we can define the font size, uh, the graph background. We can define the axis properties, for example, on x-axis. We would like to have gigahertz as the frequency unit and we can change that. We can also um, you know, change the font size for better readability <coughs> uh, for x-axis as well as y-axis, right? We can go to plot, uh, change the color of the trace, we can change the thickness of the trace and we can do all these kind of common editing operations. Once done, click on the edit icon again and the window will collapse. Now, similarly, we can go ahead and also plot the data using this S matrix, um, you know, data viewer uh, using this grid and just simply clicking on the grid uh, wherever you wish and accordingly the trace will be added to the graph. If we added too much of mess um, in, in the you know, graph window, we can just right click in the empty space and say remove all plots and all plots will be gone. And then we can again click on the respective S parameter, um, you know, grid. Uh, to plot that. Right. So this way we could uh, inspect all the S parameters of our channel which we have simulated with great ease. If we are doing a differential simulation we can go to mix mode, uh, select the nets and just simply right click and make the differential pair and observe the differential impedance, common mode impedance and so on. In this case that's not required because all these traces are single ended. Now, uh, we can also create a sub-circuit by simply double-clicking on it uh, so that we can use this schematic as a sub-block in our channel simulation. As you can see, uh, it creates a schematic. Now, we can close the layout in SI Pro window and create a new schematic. Uh, give it some name, let's say test bench. And now we will place our extracted channel um, on this schematic. And here is the equivalent schematic created by SI Pro. We can simply drag and drop it uh, to our new schematic. On a closer look, uh, you can observe you have the same pin names as we used in SI Pro. DQ0, J1, DQ1, J1, DQ0, R, U1, and so on. Now, this circuit component uh, <clears throat> is the sub-circuit which has one schematic and symbol. And you can push inside. Uh, to see the connections or, or the sample schematic which is created by SI Pro with all the pin numbers and, and stuff like that. So we will have a raw S parameter and also we will have an S parameter uh, controlled by uh, attaching the resistors and so on. That's why here in this case you see a 12 port S parameter file because there are four <coughs> pins which are used up by resistor. Now in this uh, symbol, we can go ahead and set up our transient simulation or channel simulation if you want to run some eye diagram related measurement. So we can uh, choose a transmitter single ended from channel simulation library and you can define the property of this behavioral transmitter as per the service which you may have. Um, if you have AMI model, you can also directly use an IBC AMI model here uh, by placing the respective block. Now we can make the connections at the suitable pins uh, for the transmitter and the receiver and then specify the transmitter service characteristics. For example, 2.4 Gbps, minus 1 to 1 uh, volts of swing, uh, 50 picosecond of rise and fall time. Um, also, you can double click on the transmitter model and specify the characteristics as required. So here we will include a 50 ohm electrical load we can specify the jitter specification to model. So idea is to model the transmitter surveys as, as closely as possible, including pre-emphasis and, and so on. Um, we can connect an eye probe at the output of the receiver or output of the channel wherever required. Double click on the eye probe, uh, select the measurements which we may want to perform using that probe. Right now we do have five measurements which are default selected. And we place a channel controller, define the number of bits to be simulated in the channel simulator or move it to statistical mode in case you want to do statistical you know, simulation. Similarly for the receiver, we will also have a 50 ohm load um, associated so that my net is loaded with 50 ohm, a single ended impedance on either side. Uh, if you want to simulate more channels, you can have crosstalk um, you know, transmitter model, uh, you could uh, terminate other, uh, you know, pins with 50 ohm in case you don't want to 
uh, feed through any data through that lane and so on. So once the simulation is finished, the data display, we can plot density, which essentially shows you the eye diagram on the trace we simulated. And we also add a table uh, to plot eye height and eye width, um, depending on our simulation and observe the quality of the data, uh, which is available. So here, as you can see, SI Pro makes it very, very easy for designers to import a third party layout file and perform a simulation uh, to a great uh, simplified extent. Thanks for watching.